Welcome back to the vlog and welcome here to Gasmata, West New Britain, Papua New Guinea. My name is Ryan. Um, yeah, we're sea level, beautiful, beautiful beach area right out here. Um, great snorkeling and stuff, whatnot. But anyways, we're gonna do a 20 minute flight from here across the island. We're on the south side of the island, up to the north side, up to Hoskins. Let's go ahead and get started. Igniter's on, fuel pump on, and low start. Make sure my fuel's on. Right over 14%, I'll introduce my fuel. Make sure my oil pressure is coming up. Make sure my NG is coming up. Make sure my ITT is coming up. All right, generator on. Top forward or V2 on. Once the amps come back down from spiking, then we'll throw our alternator on. Our auxiliary bus so we can get our blowers going. If you guys are confused about what some of these numbers are meaning, you guys can Google them for a way more detailed uh, explanation, but ITT is interstage turbine temperature. It basically is just kind of taking your temperature from one section of the turbine engine and displaying that. And then our NG is the percentage of the air, uh, of the output of the engine. Right now it's at 55% just sitting here um, idling. All right, our fuel caps and selectors are good. Our controls are all good. We'll turn Betty off for takeoff just because it's a bush location. She'll start yelling at us thinking that we're too low to train and to pull up and all that good stuff. All right, switches and instruments. We'll just go up to probably 2,000 feet today on the way back just because there's a cloud layer on 1,800 to 2,000 feet all the way back across the island. We're completely empty today. Just dropped off people and uh, some other cargo. So we've got 680 pounds of fuel left on board. So we're at 53.40, so we'll rotate at 54. Come back in at 63 if we had to. Right, our flaps are set, indicated and verified at 20 degrees. Our radar on standby. Now we'll go over that a little bit later um, on our flight back and I'll just show you kind of what it is and, and to work it in this airplane. It will back taxi in and depart on runway 09er. All stations, Goss Mata, 127 decimal one, Kodiak November Tango Zulu back taxiing Goss Mata for departure to Hoskins below 5,000. All right, strobe landing and pulse on our taxi light. Where's the 8861 November Tango Zulu Taxi? Where's the November Tango Zulu Taxi Gasmata Hoskins below 5000? Right, I think she heard that. Jeff is horrible today. This airstrip here actually used to be a World War II um, airstrip by the Japan, or Japan, Japanese, and it actually went all the way out that way. So it was quite a bit longer way back when. And uh, there's actually some uh, old Japanese World War II airplanes um, that are parked out up there all kind of falling apart. But anyways, if you want to see more of that kind of content on the ground, check out my Patreon page, a link below. And I've got videos around these kind of places showing you on the ground things just like that. All right, there's a bush that kind of sticks out really close to the runway up there. I will be 40 knots at that point. Otherwise, I'll go ahead and just board the takeoff. Remain on the runway, full reverse, heavy braking, cut off, pull off, and shut off if we're going off. But we'll just continue straight ahead if possible. After takeoff, pitch for 85 knots, consider EPL, consider feather. Immediate left turn to, well, the beach um, or shallower water. 80 full flaps close to the ground, emergencies, masters, and crack my door. Ignition, inlet and lights done. SAR is done, it's 35 degrees out and sea level. 1520, so 1470. 1520, ignition condition, flaps 20, fuel and harnesses. Let's complete. Right, and 54 will rotate. I'll just do a rolling start so I'm not picking up a bunch of rocks. 1470. All 
All right, there's 30. There's 40 continuing. Watch out, bird. Just get above it and get our speed up a little bit. Once we get over top of these trees, there might be a little bit of wind shear coming off the ocean. Just set it for 7.40 on the ITT. And start making our shallow turn over here towards the hill. We're gonna jump over top of the hill. The whole island's are like 45 miles wide or something. And we're starting at the southern end and heading up to uh, Hoskins on the northern end. So this time of year, the weather is really, really nice on this side of the island. And then the north side, completely different weather system this time of year, and it's the rainy season. So a lot of times you'll have beautiful, beautiful weather here, and then stormy weather just 20, 30 miles that way. It's a huge pain in the butt. Right over 85, and then over 90, we'll go zero, bring our prop to 2,000. And then we'll also bring our ITT down to 720 for a climb. And we're, like I said, we're just going up to 2,000 feet just to stay underneath of it all because it's a lot easier. Some of you guys have asked, why don't you just go through all the clouds? Can't, but most of the clouds here in PNG on most days are pretty convective, and it's just more of a pain in the butt to just be jostled around because this is a fairly small airplane. And it just throws you around the whole time, and it's just more work, so it's a lot easier just to stay underneath of it. And smooth sailing, nice smooth air most of the time. It's going to be bumpy on this flight, but most of the time, it's nice smooth air underneath the clouds, and then you go into them, and you're just like, it's like this the whole way, to, just to stay wings level. And yeah, why bother, right? All right, there's 2,000 feet. We'll go ahead and reduce our torque to 1250, and then we'll take a look at our fuel flow. Because we are below 5,000 feet, Rather than flying with our torque, we'll look at our fuel flow and bring that to 320 pounds of fuel, 20 pounds an hour, uh, because that's what we do our plane landing on. Just heading over top of this ridge, it would get a little bit bumpy just because the wind's coming at me. Hits the top of the ridge and spins all the air over. Looks like the clouds have raised up. Yeah, November Tango Zulu departed Goss Mata. Time three zero. Tracking three five eight on climb below five thousand. Estimating Hoskins five one. I thought I'd go over um, this aircraft's. Uh, weather radar pod. That's what you guys see out here on the wing out here. So it's only on this aircraft on November Tango Zulu. It is a really nice thing to have um, here flying in the islands because... All three chance on the 71 Hoskins. This is off November Oscar. I find a hit. We find a Hoskins tree passing up. The 500 on time, 1,000, checking 0, 5, 5, 2, Tokwa, Tokwa, 1, 2, all oh, station, Tokwa. All right, so you guys can see, here's Papua New Guinea, it's right above Australia, and we're out here in West New Britain today. And like I said, the whole island itself is about 50, 50 miles wide in this section right here. And like I was saying, we've got a rainy season on one side and the other side, the, the southern side is completely different than the northern side. So right about halfway, is right where the mountain range obviously goes, that's where the weather shifts. But having the weather radar when you do a lot of the flying out here in the Western Britain area and Eastern Britain is extremely, extremely helpful. Right, so if I wanted to fly with the weather radar, what I'm going to do is hit my button down here, obviously slide all the way over to the left, go down to weather radar, hit mode, and hit weather. And then I want to see down here it says up. I want to make sure that if I'm flying straight and level, I want it around two and a half, maybe sometimes 275. And that's going to give me a better indication of what I see. A lot of this stuff is just, well, all of it is, is just mountains that it's picking up right now. And then 
can come back to the navigation page, hit my map button here, and hit weather radar, and then start having it on this as well. So right now it's just picking up the mountains. As I get closer up in this area, then it will just pick up if there's any rain or whatnot. All right, that's, auto, that's autopilot off. I'm just gonna, I can already see the mountain. There's a volcano that's right in, kind of in front of Hoskins. I'm just gonna go around it. It looks like the clouds have actually raised up just a little bit since I left about 35, 40 minutes ago. Looks like a little bit of rain right here between us and Hoskins. That's just a super, super light shower. So we'll just punch through that and uh, about be there almost. All stations, Hoskins, Kodiak, November, Tango, Zulu, 17 miles to the south, 1900 feet, circuit time, Hoskins, 5-2. I can feel the temperature difference coming through the air vents, just because it's just fresh air that's coming through. So it's 25 degrees Celsius out out right now. And as we're getting close to this rain, it's you can just feel the temperature change. It's almost like air conditioning, just so it was like two minutes ago. Feels awesome now. Just barely catching the rain, just enough to hopefully even wash a few of those bugs off. As I'm coming into the pattern area, I'm still 10 miles out. I'm gonna look down here and just see what my winds are doing. So right now they're coming at me, so my plan is just to fly overhead, enter into a left downwind for runway 3-0. So I'll just fly overhead. That way I can make sure that there's nothing on the runway, and that way, yeah, well, also to let the fuel guy know that I'm here so he can come fuel me up. We'll enter one, uh, descend another 900 feet down to pattern altitude of just 1,000 feet. All stations, Hoskins, 127.1, Kodiak, Nova, Tango, Zulu, five miles to the south, 1,800. We'll be flying overhead to join the left downwind runway 30, Hoskins. BA 861 November Tango Zulu in the circuit Hoskins cancel SAR. November Tango Zulu. We'll start our descent on down to pattern altitude of a thousand feet. And start our checklist. Our selectors and brakes are good. Our taws, we can just turn it back on because we don't need it. Our VREF should be the same because it was just 20 minutes. We're 5,200 pounds, so yeah, like 62 knots at the slowest. But I'm going to bump it up to 68 because there's no reason to come in that slow today. Our lights and our inlet, we'll do inlet here in a second. The chimes let me know that there's 200 feet to go before I reach my altitude that I've set in here at 1,000 feet. The prop board. There's our 1,000 feet. All right, no airplanes, nobody, no cars, blah, 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 on the runway. All right, inlet into bypass, prop and harness is done. We do need to go around, power up, 20 degrees of flaps, pitch for 73 knots, maneuvers required, reset ITT 740. And SAR is done as well. Degrees of flaps. And our OBS to the runway heading, so I know when I'm going out perpendicular to the runway without even having to look at it. Once I'm a mile out, then I'll go ahead and turn my downwind. And I'm already basically being the numbers, so I go 20 degrees of flaps. Up down to 700 feet before I turn my base. We want 68 on final, 78 on base, and 88 on downwind. There's just about 88 right now. A little bit high, so I'm just going to go out a little bit further. That's probably good. And slow into 78 for our base.
We're a little bit further out. I'll turn my final at 600 feet today. And we'll shoot to probably land around the 500 foot marker. That's usually where I land around. I'm pitching to get my airspeed and my powers, my altitude going up and down. Full flaps, checklist complete. And there's 650, so I'm a little bit high still. So. I want to shoot for 68 knots. Because we're still about five knots above our V ref. We're going to have to 500. bring our aiming point back just a tiny bit just because we're going to float just a little bit further than if we came in right at 63 knots. What I'm looking for is my vertical speed. I want to run around 550 and then my airspeed at 68 knots. That'll give me a three, three degree, a three percent, three degree. I think it's a three degree approach. Okay, just two knots of headwind. It. I'm just going to go on down, all the way down to the end of the runway with my high idle on. That way I can pull in and he can actually hear me pull in and come fuel me up right away. There's a question you've asked me below in one of the comments and I haven't got to it. Um, check out the link below, replybank.com. It's a way you can ask me a direct question with a guaranteed response back from me. I usually don't, I don't usually, I always do a video response back to you, so you'll get a little video, personalized video back from me if you want to get that question answered. Thank you guys so much for the time that you've given me with this video, and welcome here to Hoskins. Shutting down, we'll go ahead and get our fuel. We landed with 540 pounds. Hobbs time. Turn off our blowers. Auxiliary generator, alternator, V2. Turn off them. Feather. Thanks again, guys, for taking the time to watch, and see you next time.